There are more than 6 million CCTV cameras in the UK, more per head than any other country on the planet. Computer Constable 51 Mel. Operating 24 7, these cameras are catching more and more criminals in the act. Theft, armed robbery, street fights, anti-social behaviour to really dangerous behaviour. All of it caught on camera. I'm Nick Wallace. I've been reporting on crime for more than a decade. I'm going onto the front line to see how CCTV is helping police put criminals behind bars. Tonight, criminals out of control on our roads. Drunk and drugged up drivers causing mayhem and ram raiders fleeing the scene in Britain's fastest ever car chase. People like that just, you know, do my head in. When criminals get behind the wheel, danger's never far behind. In the wrong hands, a car can become a lethal weapon. More than a million crimes were committed on our roads last year. Many of the most serious caught on camera. Sometimes the drivers were lucky to walk away alive. Stopping the mayhem on our roads takes a cool head. Camera control, 5-1. Working closely with the police on the ground, eagle-eyed CCTV operators are often the first to spot potential criminals. And when they're in cars, it's CCTV that puts the cops one step ahead. In Chester, Paul Hunt has over 100 cameras that monitor the roads in and around the city. Whiskey Zulu 29B8, male is decamped from the vehicle. In 12 years as a CCTV operator, there's little Paul hasn't seen. I think most people are responsible, um, but when you get somebody in the city who is driving irresponsibly, a car becomes a very dangerous, th a very dangerous thing. A drunk driver or a dangerous driving or a stolen vehicle. We don't really have that much in vehicle crime, um, but when we do, it tends to be quite spectacular. Today is no exception. Paul's got his eyes on potential thieves making off from the scene of a robbery. We've just received a report from Walton's Jewellers that a male has attempted to steal some jewellery off them. They're just getting in a car uh, on the Gorstax car park and police are en route and um, they're going to try and stop them. Criminals behind the wheel can turn a situation from dangerous to deadly. Paul's got to keep them in his sights. Camera control to any 51 near to Bridge Street at the junction with Pepper Street. Keeping his eyes on the monitors, Paul can see what the police can't. They're driving at speed, driving dangerously. Paul guides the police in. And he sees the thieves are heading for a traffic jam. A police cars just pulled up behind them. Two officers are chasing them down the road. Vehicles reverse in the wrong way in traffic. And it's reversed into a lamppost. It's nearly taken somebody out. Oh, the windscreen's just gone in. The gang are determined to get away. It's now driving the wrong way up Dalamere Street. Uh, the tyre's gone also. Their battered car speeds away from the cops and out of sight of the cameras. All Paul can do now is wait. Soon, a report comes in. Police have uh, just caught up with the vehicle. The three males are under arrest for driving offences and also suspicion of uh, theft from uh, one of the city centre's jewellers. At night, Paul's got his eyes peeled for a new threat. Drunk or drugged up drivers risking their own and everyone else's lives. Whiskey Zulu 29 to BA. We've got the mail on camera. The cops need Paul to track a man they suspect is high. Worse still, he seems to be heading to his car. Our colleagues over in Cheshire Police have asked us to keep an eye on a male 
They believe he might be under the influence of um, some substances, possibly drugs. If the man's on drugs, he's a danger not just to himself, but to everyone else on the road. Whiskey Zulu 290BA, he's just entered a maroon escort. Um, he's currently driving off just on Bars Roundabout. Uh, looks like he might be heading either towards City Road or onto Borton. The man's heading out of town. The hunt is on. The quicker something's moving, the harder it becomes to follow. Um, but if we're waiting for it and we're aware that it's coming, um, we will position cameras accordingly. Paul helps the police set a trap, positioning a cop to intercept the man's car. Uh, so any moment now. The man fails to stop. This is now a full-blown police chase. Um, he's just driven over the pavement and he's going the wrong way down what is pre a pretty busy area even at this time in the morning. As you can see, that is dangerous driving. Desperate to get away, the driver's out of control. Ooh, just taking out a, a bollard. It looks like he's taking out the front of his car as well. Having smashed up his car, he makes a run for it, followed by the cops. The male is decamped from the vehicle, currently making up on Eastgate Street. The male's still refusing to stop, although I think he's running out of gas. Um, he's getting a, starting to puff and pant. The man thinks he's on the home straight, but Paul can see it's a dead end. I don't think he's going anywhere quick. He's just going to go to custody. This dangerous driver books himself a taxi to the cells. His car's been seized and could be crushed. That's good because the way he was driving was a danger to the public. And thankfully, nobody's been injured, but on another day, there could have been a loss of life or somebody really could have been hurt. He's become an, an absolute lunatic. When he goes to court, his actions will be shown to that court of law, and I'd like to think he'd get a custodial sentence as a result of it. It turned out the man wasn't on drugs, but later he admitted to driving while banned, dangerous driving, failing to stop, and driving without insurance. Coming up. Drivers out of control on the streets of London. You see some stuff and you think, blimey, there are people that um, idiotic. A special CCTV operation to catch criminals behind the wheel. And meet the gang of car thieves so brazen they caught themselves on camera. Uninsured drivers are the most reckless on our roads. They kill more than 100 people every year and injure more than 20,000. Most uninsured drivers think they won't get caught. Now the cops have a secret weapon to fight back. Automatic number plate recognition cameras, AMPR for short, can read number plates and tell instantly if a vehicle's uninsured. Yep, that's going to be a good one. Currently shows insurance not held. Catching illegal drivers in the act and taking them and their vehicles off the road. I asked you to stand on the pavement, not in the car. Because I've asked you to. Because I've asked you to, please. You to Come on, mate, don't be silly, eh? Oh, you're being silly. In Rotherham, the roads are protected by a ring of AMPR cameras, screening every vehicle driving into the city and monitored live from the CCTV control room. Yeah, come room to Ernie, you go in uh, Bridgegate. CCTV operators Helen Bolton and Neil Walker use them to catch illegal and uninsured drivers. It automatically pings on our computer. It gives us re vehicle registration, um, tells us what vehicle it is, tells us intelligence details. The cameras also flag more serious offences. 80% of uninsured drivers are involved in other crimes. We'll be open to uh, to stop cars that have got 
like drug intelligence on and possibly get him with drugs in car. I mean, if it's a stolen one, that's great. Or someone could have, have done a serious assault and be wanted and be driving a car. It can lead to a, a array of things, from petty crime to uh, serious, serious and organised crime. So we like them serious and organised crime ones. It's four o'clock and getting close to rush hour. Already, AMPR is getting results, flagging uninsured drivers. Foxtrot Echo Hotel. The latest hit against the white Audi is even more serious. Yeah, we just had a AMPR activation, possible uh, drug supply class A. Two men have been known to use it to deal drugs. It's a hot list priority, uh, which means that it's more of a, a vital that we stop it, really. They are quite prolific drug dealers. Helen tracks the car on camera, helped by the fact it's a distinctive vehicle. You don't get many driving about, not white Audis anyway. The car's heading out of town. Romeo Tango Zulu. Helen radios the cops. Juliet Foxtrot 9 to base. I'm Doncaster Road heading towards uh, Herenthorpe Valley Road. If you can keep me updated, please. It's PC Paul Reddick's job to stop it. Now I'm following CCTV directions. The only problem I've got at the moment is that CCTV coverage. We lose it further up this road. It's, uh, it's heading towards the uh, LBQ roundabout. Yes, yes, it's gone uh, right towards Masbury, just going over uh, Millmore Bridge now. It's taking uh, the right hand fork. The car drives out of sight of the cameras, but PC Reddick is closing in. Yeah, Roger, I've got it in sight. It's uh, probably 200 yards in front of me. They've stopped the right car, but it's not the driver PC Reddick was expecting. Just uh, stand by. Yeah, we've got a lone female driver. So they're just going to check now, see whether she's got insurance. Because um, we've had information that it's being used by two males. Just do me a favour, just make it secure and I'm going to sit it back in my car. I'm hoping there's nothing to worry about, just I'm acting on some intelligence that would be, I've received. Back in CCTV control, more information's coming through about the woman behind the wheel. Of possession of a small quantity of cocaine. The female driver of that vehicle is uh, the girlfriend to uh, one of the males that's been dealing drugs. She's actually been involved with the drug deal inside of it uh, and it looks like they've been stopped uh, previously. More police arrive to help. They give the driver and the car a thorough search. Why don't people keep the cars tidy? Our job would be a lot, whole lot easier if they kept the cars, cars tidy. This time there's no drugs in the car so the woman's done nothing wrong. But PC Reddick has some friendly advice. Clean the blooming car out. Our job will be... It's a, I've, I've never seen a car so mucky in my life. Looks nice on the outside, it looks a great tip on the inside. The cops have done all they can for today. Uh, obviously she's been searched, the vehicle's been searched thoroughly. We're quite satisfied there's no drugs on that, on that vehicle whatsoever. It's not to say that, that they don't use that vehicle to transport drugs between two places. Intelligence will be put in that at this moment in time there's no drugs on that, in that car. AMPR plays a vital part in the crackdown on drugs in Rotherham. With 700 arrests in the last year and drugs worth £300,000 taken off the street. Get these people off the streets because obviously drugs aren't good. We need to get them, you know, put behind bars. That's, uh, that's the only way to combat it really get these people put away for a long time. Across the country, police are using AMPR to target crime hotspots, and they're getting serious results. In London, you're twice as likely to be hit by an uninsured driver than anywhere else in Britain. Today, the cops are out in force to stop it in a major operation, codenamed Cubo. Although we're doing a traffic operation, we also think crime and criminal activity and keep, keeping a track on what people are doing, people who are known to us, what vehicles they're driving. In an unmarked car close to a busy road, Sergeant Rob Phillip is armed with two mobile AMPR cameras. He's scanning every vehicle number plate that passes. We're set up so that we're reading things coming straight off the roundabout and it's a hit by the time it's coming level to us, so it's a really quick system. Is all the way down, please, mate? 
Cops further down the road are ready to pounce on any uninsured drivers the cameras flag. So if they're asking for a hard copy of insurance, you haven't got that, have you? They're also stopping cars with unpaid traffic fines. You, you can't do that without some... stopping me, though. Yeah, but sometimes the computers can aren't that, stopping me. Come on, man. You... Come on, mate. Seriously, you can. And checking road documents to uncover those drivers with something to hide. Doesn't look like you, sir. <laughs> Looks like a cartoon drawing. <laughs> Vehicles being driven illegally can be seized and crushed. Technology is great, but it does need decent police officers, trained well, um, and motivated to go out and do this. The operation's barely underway when Rob's camera flags a car as uninsured. Sierra Golf 5.9. There's more to this stop than meets the eye. The car number plate's been tampered with. The vehicle itself, we believe, is on false plates. So the actual red number plate is displaying doesn't belong to this vehicle. So hence why the gentleman's been placing handcuffs, because obviously we're not sure what he's been up to. Fake plates are used to hide a vehicle's true identity. The car could be stolen or involved in crime. Motor vehicles. Um, it can, yeah, could can be stolen from a motor vehicle. It could be used in theft of petrol. No, do well, find you might in a again. car off of petrol and drive off on false number plates. So, so at the moment, we're just trying to get the vehicle confirmed as to what Sorry, it is, man, yeah. and then obviously we can deal with the gentleman separately. The problems with this car are totting up. There's no tax, no insurance, and worse still, someone scratched the ID number off the engine. We cannot trace this vehicle at the moment. I don't know whether they've taken the whole VIN plates out or all of them. It's done a very good job, but we cannot. We don't know what this vehicle is. So it's going to get lifted, uh, and then they'll forensically look through it and hopefully find something that can ID identify the car. The car with false plates is heading straight to the police garage, whilst its driver is arrested for having no insurance. As the day goes on, more uninsured drivers are being caught. The Lehman Gam gang's vehicle uh, links to Class A drug supply. The AMPR cameras also flag up any other crimes a vehicle might be linked to. That's the beauty of this system, is, is it tells us um, ABC123 is owned by Joe Bloggs, who is a known burglar. Well, let's have a chat with Joe and let's find out what he's doing. Rob's latest hit has nothing to do with burglary it's far more serious. It's known for a uh, firearms marker. Uh, Asian male uh, pulled a uh, black handgun. With the car stopped, the cops are on their guard. OK, this one, an Asian male apparently pulled a black handgun on somebody as a part of a road rage incident, so I'm going to have to go off and see what's what, OK? Keep a lid on it, yeah? Keep calm. Can you take the camera out of my face, please? I don't yeah. like... The suspect seems agitated. Yeah, come and talk to my <laughs> colleague over here. Can well, I get my phone? No. no, just hold on to the... Just hold when on it to comes to phone. guns, the police can't take any chances. Oh, man. Come from court and I get pulled over straight away. I've got a bad feeling about this one. The guy's got a bit of attitude and I think this uh, might develop nicely. What a day, mate. OK, my friend, well, you're going to be searched and your vehicle is going to be searched. And the reason for that is that there's information on the index of your car. The, an yeah, Asian male pulled a handgun on somebody as part of a road rage incident. So we're going to search you and the vehicle. The man's adamant the firearms report is nothing to do with him and is far from pleased with being stopped. How long ago now, How many that? times have I been pulled over in this car just for a stupid gun? I'm not stupid. I wouldn't want to risk my life for a stupid ass gun. Oh. Problem is, is that it can get, get quite dangerous if, if, you know, say armed officers stopped him and he really played up, you know, we could put ourselves at some serious risk here. He says he, he's had the car for the last three weeks. If it's happened within the last three weeks, I think he might be coming to the police station with us. After further checks, the man's story is confirmed. He's allowed to go. With the information held on his car updated, the investigation into the gun will continue. Part of our intelligence gathering when we deal with um, criminals is try and get as much information about what they have in their lives, whether that's a car, a van or, or whatever else. It certainly helps us 
to give us information so that we can stop these, these people on, in their cars, speak to them, find out what they're doing, where they're going, and it all adds to the intelligence picture. It's now six o'clock. The cops have stopped well over 100 vehicles. with those being driven illegally seized and towed away. Do you get the silver focus? Despite the long shift, Rob knows it's vital to stay alert at this time of day. Later on in the afternoon, uh, I mean, we've had various people stop, jump out their car and run off. Uh, people that just um, echo Oscar five, seven. Rob's interrupted by his camera's latest hit. Yet another car with no insurance. It turns out the man behind the wheel is a known criminal who's banned from driving. The driver was recognised uh, by one of my colleagues. I think that person has been arrested on suspicion of what we believe to be disqualified driving and taking the vehicle without the owner's consent. The cuffed man's making threats. Reasonable. You're reasonable, you're not being reasonable. You're not being reasonable. If you're being reasonable, it doesn't need to be like this. His pockets are full of cash, more than 500 pounds. A further search of the car reveals a large stash of expensive clothes hidden under the spare wheel. The man's got a lot of explaining to do back at the station. His car will be checked to see if it's linked to any other crimes, which could lead the cops to more criminals. This is a hire car, which may well be being used by a number of different people and shared around what we call a pool car. As such, people are driving it, they're uninsured, and by stopping these vehicles, we're actually maintaining a record and keeping up to date as to who's driving what and maintains our intelligence databases. Over two days, this London-wide operation resulted in more than 600 vehicles being taken off the road and nearly 100 arrests for offences including sexual assaults, GBH and drugs. The traffic has a bad reputation. That we stick on Mr and Mrs Miggins for driving without a seatbelt on. But our, our main role here is road safety and denying criminals the use of the road. And that's really what it's all about, is stopping you know, the bad people getting from A to B. Because if we're stopping them before they get to your house to burgle it, that's probably a good thing. Coming up. Total lunacy at level crossings. Britain's fastest ever police chase. And CCTV helps solve a mystery crash. I can't believe what he was, he was doing. Hammersmith and Fulham's roads are some of the busiest in London. Watched by almost 800 CCTV cameras, capturing heart-stopping moments in real time. With years on the job, CCTV manager Andy Stocker has seen it all. CCTV FH. His cameras have recorded everything. Freak accidents, mindless driving, and terrifying crashes. When it comes to traffic, CCTV is um, really quite important. We catch incidents, we can review the footage if we haven't seen it live, we can relay that to the officers uh, on the scene, um, and you know, sometimes you know, they, they uh, can make a better informed decision uh, with the input of the CCTV operators. Catching bad drivers in the act happens a lot. People aren't paying attention, they're on their mobile phones, and it's, it's quite amazing. You see some stuff and you think, blimey, you know, really? Are there people that um, idiotic? The police rely on CCTV to help them stop dangerous drivers before disaster strikes. We sometimes get um, a number plate flashed up with a, on, the, on the police radio with a, a description of the vehicle, and it, you know, can be serious um, crime. Andy's been asked to search for a red sports car that's been seen driving erratically. We know the red general direction of travel, so we're just looking through the, the, the uh, cameras now. Well, 
there it is, I think that's it. So, right, okay, yep. It's driving pretty quick through traffic uh, in Shepherd's Bush. With the target in his sights, Andy radios the police. CCTV FH just spotted the red uh, vehicle driving north north at speed. The high powered car's being driven wildly through the city streets, tailgating traffic and speeding. So it's late evening, but um, it's, it's still quite busy on that road, uh, and the police are just now uh, pulling up behind him. The cops are flagging him down, but the driver's not stopping. It's, it's accelerating away, and he looks like he's trying to uh, escape the police. With heavy traffic ahead, finally the driver does come to a halt. But Andy's still got work to do. You know, a lot of cases, you know, can quickly flare up and people can get violent or they can run off. So operators are always on it. They're always watching, seeing what's happening. So you're going to cuff him and he's taking the keys out. And he's having a stern world with him. It's good. The guy was driving like a lunatic. You know, he deserves to be pulled over. People like that just, you know, do my head in. It's so dangerous. They just don't know what they're doing. You've got a high-powered sports car, you could cause uh, yourself and, and someone else a serious injury. City roads at night are always busy, and the cameras are always watching. Crashes can happen anywhere. Although we don't have any sort of big motorways or anything where people think, you know, accidents happen, in reality, most of the accidents happen when you've got people doing silly things. Scanning the monitors, Andy spots something alarming people rushing towards a car that's crashed into the side of a cafe. CCTV FH. Andy sees the driver getting out and zooms in for a closer look. Seems quite, quite sort of dazed and, and confused, really. Uh, just his body language is sort of um, suggesting that he can't under, quite understand how he's ended up, you know, uh, on the pavement like that. The police arrive and try to make sense of what's happened. CCTV may have recorded the answer. Uh, we can go back a few minutes sometimes if we want to and uh, see what's just happened uh, and just confirm uh, incidents. Andy scrolls back through the footage to see if the crash has been recorded. <laughs> He's actually driving the wrong way up uh, uh, King Street. This driver's taken a serious wrong turn. Whoa. I can't believe what he was he was doing. He's gone over a large curb, squeezed between, you know, a cycle rack, a lamppost and the shops. <laughs> and then into a shop, I just it's astonishing. Back on the street, there's another surprise. The driver's not alone. His smartly dressed wife seems just as confused. It's quite interesting looking at footage and, you know, you, you can't actually hear anything and you sort of try and work out what's going on. They've been out, they've probably been to a nice restaurant and, you know, it looks like they've been out for a meal. It's anyone's guess why, why he done that, you know. I presume, maybe, he was just blindly following um, his sat-nav. This isn't exactly the way the couple thought their evening would end. The cops have a few more questions for them and take the car keys just to be safe. We've basically explained to them what the situation is. Um, the person's driven up the wrong way and ended up in the front of the shop. I mean, it's quite a serious incident here, um, but also it's quite, um, it's quite an odd, odd thing to view, you know, to, to watch someone driving up the wrong way and then onto pavements, Kurt, it just, it's not usual. In January 2012, cops in the Midlands were out to catch a ram raider fleeing the scene of a robbery. What followed was Britain's fastest ever police chase. All of it caught on camera. Over six months, this smash and grab gang were behind at least 15 robberies across the West Midlands. Ransacking tills and cash machines. To clear the scene of the crime quickly, they thought they'd stolen the perfect getaway car. A top-end Audi packing a turbo Lamborghini engine, one of only two of its kind in the world. The robber's car was so fast, it could easily outrun the cops in pursuit. As the driver hurtles onto the M6, even the police helicopter is struggling to keep up. With turbos flaming, 
The car's doing an unbelievable speed of 180 miles an hour. The driver thinks he's got away with it. Uh, he's gone behind the uh, flats in the car park. It's a bailout YM standby. But bailing out of the car, he's picked up by CCTV, sprinting into a block of flats with an accomplice. There's nowhere left to run. Cornered in the building, the cops move in and arrest them. The man's 180 mile an hour getaway made him Britain's fastest ever speeding driver. He was jailed for nine years. As security on top of the range cars improve, criminals are being forced to adapt. Getting their hands on the keys is now the number one priority and they'll stop at nothing to steal them. In the summer of 2012, the upmarket streets of West London were under siege from a gang, stealing high-powered luxury cars. Their method was simple but effective. Breaking into homes, grabbing car keys and anything else of value, then driving away in the victim's own vehicle. CID detective Peter Lower was determined to stop the crime wave. The only reason we're in this job is to catch people that are doing things wrong. It's, you know, it's what we're there to do. Very, very systematic. They'll go in and get what they wanted and get out. CCTV at this family home captured one raid as it happened. Unbelievably, the gang are returning to the scene of a previous crime. They've nicked this £100,000 Mercedes before. Now they want it back. It is so brazen to go back to, an, back to a premises that they've targeted again, but it goes to show that they felt that the prize was sufficient. The gang heads straight to a window just out of shot. Their general MO when they're committing the burglaries was to target vulnerable points of entry that they could force up. Uh, whether by hand or by using a crowbar. But this time they're out of luck. They've woken the owner. Determined to catch them, he charges out of the house without stopping to get dressed. He gives chase, but the gang vanish. The break-ins continued. It's one thing having your, your property broken into, which you know, it's, 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 it's a horrible crime to have to become a victim to. But to have your vehicle taken as well, I mean, some people are frustrated by it and others find that they actually have to move. DC Lower's prime suspects were a West London gang, cocky enough to make their own music video. In the video, they bragged about some familiar sounding crimes. The language that, which they're using is extremely brazen, in particular one verse in that video where they're talking about them to creep slow and uh, the language they use is very specific towards burglary and being in, in someone's address. The police needed proof that the gang was behind them. Then some unexpected evidence came their way when the gang caught themselves on camera. Trawling social network sites, the cops discovered a photo. Of course, when you, you open a file, you never know quite what you're going to find. This is the gang's leader, Callan Williamson, leaning against a £40,000 Land Rover stolen in one of the break-ins. Astonishingly, he'd posted this photo online himself. I was surprised, to be honest. Um, yeah, I was just surprised to see that he, he would be stood like that, posed like that in front of a, you know, what is a stolen car. With this discovery, the investigation changed gear. Arrests followed. The gang's camera phones proved a treasure trove of evidence. More stolen cars, cash, and incriminating photos they'd have been better off deleting. Just that certainly stupidity does come into it. There's, there's a hell of a lot of naivety as well. And I think um, it's almost as though they wanted to tell someone what they were doing to make it worthwhile than doing it. 
showing the designer gear, showing the uh, you know the amount of shopping bags that they've just you know been and acquired. You know, it's just blazing to think actually we're not going to get caught. The Snap Happy gang had saved the best for last. We'd got some reasonable amount of pictures. We thought this is good, um, and then we found the videos. They'd even filmed themselves racing the high-powered cars they stole. The cops could hardly believe what they were seeing and hearing. We were just stunned just to see it, just to see the way that they were talking about the cars. Oh, bro, it's ridiculous. The fact that in this video they talk about which ones they're going to have next. One day it was the Porsche. So this video alone shows how much they enjoyed it. You know, they're dancing, they're singing along. With driving like this, it was only a matter of time before someone was killed. How many more risks were they going to take in high-powered vehicles that really do they have the experience to drive? It became vitally important that you know, we did convict these people for what they'd done. DC Lower had enough evidence to prove the gang was behind 15 burglaries and nine luxury car thefts, netting them an estimated half a million pounds. In April 2013, eight men were convicted of conspiracy to commit burglary and jailed for a total of 32 years. With the gang off the streets, burglaries in the borough fell by a staggering 48%. Coming up, the chase for a car thief takes a terrifying turn. And when a woman's knocked down by a car in London, you won't believe what happens next. More than 10 cars an hour are nicked in Britain every day. Sometimes it's joyriders, and sometimes criminals have their eye on the money. Here in Cambridge, police are on the tail of a stolen high-powered Mercedes worth more than 20 grand. The driver's determined to get away, whatever the cost. Captured by the cops on board camera, the high-speed chase hits 100 miles an hour. A devastating crash has been avoided by seconds. The car thief who risked his own and everyone on that train's lives was later jailed for three and a half years. It's not just criminals who abuse level crossings. CCTV shows the terrifying risks that ordinary people will take just to avoid a few minutes' wait. Last year, there were more than 300 near misses. Signal controller Trevor Perkins uses CCTV to watch busy level crossings. Every shift, um, I think almost without exception, somebody will abuse the crossings. When the barriers go down or the crossing lights turn red, you're meant to wait. But not on the tracks. If Trevor spots someone on the crossing, he'll try to stop the trains before disaster strikes. Once we've cleared the signal, the crossing is clear, obviously if people start jumping over then, um, we can't control that. There's just no excuse for this kind of behaviour. Impatience, um, got somewhere to go, late for work, but it's better to be late by five minutes and not get there at all. These pictures are a chilling reminder of what can happen if you don't stop when you should. 
Being hit by a 120-ton train traveling at more than 70 miles an hour will most likely end up with someone being seriously injured or killed. It would upset me a great deal if, while I was on my shift, that somebody, whoever, was injured during that period. Um, they're very heavy trains, and uh, particularly freight ones, and they take a lot of stopping. But at the end of the day, if somebody doesn't come home safely, there's a relative, a loved one, uh, who's going to be grieving. Cameras can catch it, but can't stop it. For Trevor and his colleagues, it's a never-ending battle to avoid more needless tragedies. We don't want to see that, and we'll do whatever we can to ensure it doesn't happen. Being a CCTV operator, you never know what you'll see next. In one shocking case, what an operator thought was a tragedy quickly became something else entirely. <laughs> On any given Friday night, CCTV manager Andy Stocker knows to expect the unexpected. We see lots of really bizarre things. You know, obviously we're we're uh, focused on you know crime and antisocial behaviour and, and, and monitoring that. But obviously we pick up some really bizarre events. On a busy night in Hammersmith, Andy spots a young woman running away from her boyfriend, and blindly into traffic. Whoa! Andy thinks she's out cold, but her boyfriend seems to know she's okay. Rather than help her up. He attacks the driver. CCTV FH. And he has to keep his eye on everything and get help fast. There's an incident uh, RTA uh, on Askew Road. A passerby is trying to help calm the man down. Still under attack, the driver speeds off. Guy's just running down the down the road, looking, uh, running down the road after him. We've just raided out the police. They're on their way, uh, and also the ambulance service uh, will be informed, and they'll be uh, attending. Andy's been monitoring the scene for a couple of minutes. A large crowd is gathering. All he can do is watch and hope help gets there soon. Tensions are running pretty high there. He just seems very angry. He's having arguments with all the people there. I believe, looking at it, that a lot of these people know each other. They've probably just come out of a pub, fueled by a drink, probably. It's all uh, looking a bit uh, heated. While the man's being calmed down, the situation changes. His girlfriend gets up. And he can't believe what he's seeing as she staggers to her feet. She's staggering around. She's falling over again. You know, sometimes the, the, the situation changes. It's changed from a, a, you know, a female in the middle of the road that's been run over to a, a woman that's staggering around. But the woman could still be concussed. As the police and ambulance arrive, there's yet another twist. Not only has she got to her feet again, she's attacking her boyfriend. We need to ensure that this woman's actually taken away in an ambulance and not in a, in a police van, because, you know, she's obviously seriously injured and she could have internal bleeding. Uh, she needs to be checked out. And you know, she's actually now being taken away uh, by the ambulance staff. Andy says it's one of the most extraordinary sequences of events that he's ever seen. The driver abandoned the car a few roads away. He later handed himself into police. The woman went on to assault two policemen, the paramedics and a nurse at hospital. Her boyfriend faced no further action. <laughs>